Hi, it's Harma with the Harma Channel. Today, I have a guest who has been with me over six years, mm -hmm. and she's been in the business over 25 years. 27. 27 Counting. years. This lady over here is the compliance broker, office broker of our office, Keller Williams and Sinner Sherman Oaks. Our office in 2019 did over 1,100 transactions, 1.3 billion in volume. She watches everyone's documents and keeps our office out of trouble. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> to doing that. I know how much work that is. So uh, today we're gonna talk about five things that you should know when you're writing an offer. This is California-based uh, purchase contract that she gets questions on all the time. The number one, is it true or false that you have to have a deposit to open an escrow? That would be false. You do not have to have a deposit to open escrow. However, the seller's gonna to wanna to make sure that the buyer's serious mm -hmm. and he has some skin in the game. So he's mm -hmm. gonna to wanna to see a 3% deposit into escrow. And can you explain to them why 3%? For liquidated damages, because if the buyer defaults on a purchase agreement after they've removed their contingencies, they're in jeopardy of losing that 3% to mm -hmm. the seller. You can always offer more deposit to be more serious and sure. get your offer accepted, right? Sure. Is, is there anything wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Awesome. True or false that seller pays for all closing costs? That would be false also. Um, obviously, in real estate, everything is negotiable, but customarily, California real estate, the seller pays most of the closing costs. Mm -hmm. So, natural hazard disclosure is something that the buyers, seller, I ask the seller the buyers should know, and mm -hmm. what they do, they get it from third party. So the seller usually orders, pays for it, pays for it. and says, here you go, all the data available out there. Mm -hmm. Escrow fees, usually each pay their own. Each pay their own. Uh, everything is not paid by seller or buyer, but you should know those items so you kind of know what the closing costs will look like. Also, in a short sale or REO world, mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot more of the buyer paying those fees because the seller doesn't have the money. Mm -hmm. True or false? Mm -hmm. The purchase offer is written all cash. Is it true that if it's all cash, there is no appraisal contingency? That's not true. Okay. Again, everything's negotiable. Just because they're paying all cash doesn't mean they're waiving an appraisal contingency. Correct. They still, they still have the right if they check the box to get an appraisal. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, the second page um, on the purchase contract that you have to check the box if you don't want an appraisal on it. And just because it's cash, but they still want to appraise to see if the value is there or not. Make sure it's fair market value, that they're right. paying fair market value. Yeah. True or false, time starts ticking mm -hmm. when escrow opens. That's a big false. And mm -hmm. I get this question a lot. But as the contract is written, the clock starts ticking when the contract is accepted. That might be the, the RPA or it might be a counter offer, it might be three counters, but when they have a final acceptance of that offer, mm -hmm. Like if the offer is accepted today, October 11th, tomorrow's day one, mm -hmm. October 12th. And now let's talk about that. This is very important because a lot of people are confused on contingency period. Yes. Okay. Saturday and Sundays, do they count towards contingencies? They do and accept when it's at the end of the contingency. Mm -hmm. um, a contingency cannot end on a weekend or a legal holiday. So if you open an escrow on Monday, the first weekend, it does count towards the contingencies. It counts every day, it's calendar day. So if the contingency dates are 14 days and day 14 is Saturday, then that contingency goes to Monday. Unless Monday's a legal holiday, then it goes to Tuesday. Which is 11.59 p.m. that night. Same goes for close of escrow. True or false, the final verification of the condition, which is a form you sign right before close of escrow. True or false, that is a contingency. It is not a contingency of the sale. It's a time when the buyer goes in to make sure the property's in the condition it was when they wrote the offer. And also, if they had asked the seller to do any repairs, that's the time they can check and make sure those repairs were done. Mm -hmm. If there's an issue, uh, one we just ran into, the pool was screening at the, at the, at the, at the final walkthrough. So we were able to stop the funding, mm -hmm. um, but we first checked to make sure that they weren't gonna lose their rate or their lock mm -hmm. um, until the south of the homeowner got the pool back running and blue again and then we were able to close. 
you as an agent, if you're watching this, you are responsible to go back to the property and your final voucher and make sure they did um, leave the property with the same condition from the day you had an offer accepted. You never know what situation the sellers are in. Right, one more thing, if you're a listing agent, make sure to educate your sellers that they need to keep the water on, the electricity on, they need to keep the yeah, campfire, sure. the pool or the gardener, they need to, we need to educate them to let them know that they need to keep things going, keep the house up. Yeah, you're not done until, until you get the recording done. Absolutely. I hope you find this helpful. Dimitri is awesome. I'm going to leave her information in my bio of, um, in the link below. And if you'd like to contact her or me, feel free to send us an email, a comment, and we'll be happy to respond. Thank you. Thank you.